seen other videos showing this antenna online uh, with the 817ND. I figured it was cheap enough, it was 20, 20 bucks or gigaparts thereabouts, I thought I'd give it a try. These are my findings so far with my this antenna and I'll sum it up. You are not going to want to waste your time with digital modes with this antenna. It uh, pretty much reacts the same way as a random wire does. It's running right into your radio uh, with your ground attached directly to your radio. It picks up all kinds of noise. It's picking up noise directly from my computer. It's picking. It's a laptop. It picks up noise from my USB battery when I hook that to the radio. It picks up the noise from the voltage regulator from my solar panel. I ended up having to run my solar panel directly into the radio without the voltage regulator to even be able to use it because that's the only way I got no noise. Keep in mind, none of these are issues when using a real dipole attached to my 817. Um, I do not get any of that kind of noise. So this literally works just like a random wire as far as what it picks up in noise. It's ridiculous. Um, the only thing I can use to transmit as far as digital modes is um, I have to use a rig blaster. I can't use a makeshift cable. The rig blaster does have some filtering in it so that the RF doesn't kick your USB out. Without that, I can usually run 2.5 watts out of that radio for digital mode with uh, a standard dipole connected to it. When I use random wire and all that stuff, just like this, I can only use uh, a makeshift cable. I can only do about a watt. So I have to use the rig blaster in order to even to able to transfer two and a half watts. And you can't transfer five, transmit at five watts because again, this antenna picks up so much RF and transmits, I don't know what it is, but it's, it has to do with RFI and it'll kick the USB out. So with this, just like any random wire antenna, these telescopic ones that go right into your radio and then you have the wire for your ground, um, they get a ton of noise. So I've tried this quite a bit with digital and it's just not cutting it. Um, you, can't, you can't pick up hardly anything because of the noise. Uh, as soon as you start hooking up the sound card and all that stuff, it, even with the right equipment, it just there's just too much noise it gets. Not an issue when I use a real dipole antenna uh, that's got a legitimate feed line running to it. So that's my first observations when using these whips. Um, and with this whip particular, but I'm sure they're all probably going to have the same issue, is that you're going to get a lot of, a uh, lot more RFI because of the type of antenna it is. So as soon as you start doing digital modes, you're going to have equipment there plugged into it that's going to cause RFI. Also, as soon as you start running cables to your computer, you're going to change the SWR because now you've got all this extra wire ran to your computer. It's not a huge deal. I have just like 12 feet of wire as prescribed for the 20 meter whip and I just bundled up a little tighter until the SWR goes down to like just one notch or two notches or zero notches which is safe on the 817 um, but even with that being said at two and a half watts using the rig blaster I transmitted several times with whisper and I only had one person pick me up that was a fellow in Auburn Alabama and the line of sight for that is 754 miles but only one I'll go back to uh, the whisper map and refresh it just to be sure that nothing else has popped up yeah only one person heard me out of about eight attempts so and I couldn't hear anybody on whisper and yet when you look at the whisper map without filtering from my call sign there's all kinds of people out there using whisper it just doesn't work like I say you can't really run the antenna is too short um, and then if you cut back to two and a half watts that's the most you can do even if you're using something like a rig blaster that's the most you can do without the USB kicking out um, whereas I can do five watts with the rig blaster when I have it hooked to a real antenna with a um, where the antenna is like you know 20 feet 30 feet away and I have a feed line to it then I can pump five watts out of this radio with a rig blaster without RFI kicking out my USB but with the antenna this close uh, to my computer, two and a half is the best you're going to get, and one watt is the best you're going to get with a makeshift, makeshift cable that doesn't have filtering. Again, that's that's the problem for transmit. Plus, it's a very much of a compromise antenna because it's short, and for receive, you've got noise. As soon as, like I say, as soon as I used an external USB power power to power the radio, 
it picks up too much noise to hear anything, even CW. I, the only way I can power it is like with a with just a normal straight 12 volt battery that has no circuitry in it. Then you could power it and knock interference or my solar panel, which is running straight into it with no voltage regulator. But uh, you have to watch that because my panel's up to 18 volts and the radio is only rated to handle up to 16. So you really have to watch what your panel's pushing into that, how much sun it's getting. So it's not really practical for digital mode. I've tried it with a pretty clean setup as far as noise levels and I've never had an issue doing it this way with other antennas. So now let's look at the antenna and you'll be able to see the noise that's captured just by me adding hardware to it. You'll be able to see the noise changes as I go and show you what it picks up. So now I've tried this with FT8 and I have sent out several FT8 requests and no one is hearing me. Um, when I go to PSK Reporter uh, you will see that uh, basically after sending out nothing is heard by me. So even with the rig blaster to help with the RFI so that I could transmit at the 2.5 watts no one is hearing me with this antenna. It is so short. Uh, it just you're going to need to be able to pump out the full 5 watts and you're not going to be able to do that with the digital mode. So that, that cuts it for, for receive, I mean for transmit altogether. And again, here's what it sounds like on receive. You will notice this is with it connected to the computer. You can barely hear the FT8. Now as soon as I disconnect the computer, you can hear it. So the issue with this antenna is just like an, uh, a random wire antenna that's connected right to the radio with a ground plane. It picks up a lot of local noise and you get a lot more noise off your voltage regulator or like a USB external battery to run it that way. So anyway, here's what the antenna looks like. From that aspect it's pretty handy. You can adjust SWR pretty easy. You just move the cable around and you'll be able to see the SWR lines on your meter on the radio adjust and once you have it you're fine so that's easy so this gives you an idea how I did it. So right now I had to bundle them up like this because I have all this extra cable that was connected to the computer but you know this is the 12 foot 10 inches they recommend and I just toss it out accordingly and then I watch the SWR meter and I adjust this as I talk or as the computer was transmitting so that the SWR would go to what it needs to go to. So there you go. Uh, that's my first review so far of this antenna. Digital modes, uh, certain types of batteries, voltage regulators, it's going to pick up that stuff that I don't ever have an issue when I have a real dipole antenna connected. So uh, that's the negatives. You should be able to use it fine 5 watts for phone, 5 watts for CW. Those won't be an issue. Um, how efficient it is and how well it really works for those modes, I'll try that tomorrow. But today I have determined this antenna is worthless for trying digital modes. Just my take on it. Again, I have to factor in how much effort compared to just using a dipole. Um, yes, the dipole has a little bit of time, but keep in mind I've got to where I could just toss my dipole over a tree and do it as an inverted V. It takes like 10 minutes to set up. So it's not a huge deal, you know, it's a little more to carry around because you have a cable, but you don't even need the tower. As long as you have a tree, you can just toss it over a tree and run it as an inverted V-dipole. And I've had really good luck with that. I wouldn't waste your time with the 40 through 10 meter telescoping thing because if it's only this efficient on 20 meters, it's going to be worthless at 40. And everything above 20, the bands are so closed that no one's going to hear you probably anything on those, even though they're closer to being more efficient on those because those are shorter wavelengths but again um, don't expect a lot with this antenna um, again I'll test it further with CW although I don't know CW so I don't know if I'll get anybody to respond but we can see maybe I can try my call sign maybe the PSK reporter will tell me oh there's a site that monitors CW's uh, CW calls and kind of reports like PSK Reporter does. Uh, I gotta remember where that's at, but that would be a good way to test CW, because I really don't know CW, but I could at least key out my call sign. Um, so that'd be a way to test that and, and really test voice, but this is a realistic test. Don't waste your time with digital. Uh, not with these uh, little whips like this. It's, it's, it's more than likely not gonna be worth your time. Um, unless you have a radio that you can connect that 
well, it, it still won't be worth your time because the antenna is going to cause too much RFI and kick out your USB. Um, it's done this with the Rig Blaster on the 891. It does it on the 817. That's the most wattage you're going to get when I use random wire that's going right off the back of the radio. So it's just got its limitations. So nix it from digital modes. It's not worth it. Not a single person heard me.